Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God tonight. We thank God for life, health, and strength. Just another opportunity to be back in the land of the living on the social media with the saints of God. We want to welcome every one of you who have taken time out tonight to join Transforming Live Bible Radio with Jerry Ross Live Worldwide and Positive Power 21 Christian Media. And you know how we do it. We have to always give honor to our Lord and Savior because he is the one who makes it possible for us to come to you every Tuesday night with the triple podcast. And without him, we could not bring these words before you. So let us pray just a moment. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you just to say thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Lord, we thank you right now for the blood that is flowing warm through our veins. We thank you, God, because once again, it is you alone who have made it possible for your servant to come before your people as a vessel, O oh God, that you might use, O oh Lord, to speak a word through, O oh God, that we all might grow thereby. And Lord, tonight, as the Holy Spirit, under the guidance of your anointing, O oh God, as your vessel, yields herself unto you, O oh God. Lord, help us be transformed by this word as we hear what is spoken tonight. O oh Lord, teach us how to take authority over our heart that we may not be taken advantage of by the enemy, O oh Lord, that we might walk in the authority of your word. We thank you now for every morsel that we may hear, that it may be planted into good soil and produce those things which you want in our lives. We thank you now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the precious Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And again we say amen, amen, and amen. And again, we say welcome to Transforming Lives by Radio. You are listening to Dr. V, better known as Dr. Virginia Singleton, Senior Pastor of the Divine Church of Deliverance, all the way from Florence, South Carolina. And yes, there is a word from the Lord. Tonight, we are going to be coming to you from the book of Proverbs, chapter Chapter 15, and we are going to be looking at verses 13 through 15. That's Proverbs chapter 15. And we are going to be reading tonight for our foundation of text 13 through 15. And they read A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but thy son. Sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. 14. The heart of him that hath knowledge, the heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. My God. Then verse 15 reads All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart have a continual feast. Oh my God, yes, there is a word from the Lord. And our topic tonight is take authority over your heart. And we are going to be using tonight the King James Version and the uh, Christian Standard Bible as written by Dr. Tony Evans Study Bible. Praise God, praise God. First of all, we want to just kind of preface uh, our Bible study tonight because as we know, um, this is, uh, I see, I'm going to label this as Love Week. Why? Because on the 14th, this Thursday, this Friday, 
will be Valentine's Day. Yes, Valentine's Day. And we know that um, some people in there, they'll say, well, are they going to plan this falling up all over again? And, you know, and some that has maybe had some problems, we'll probably use that time to kind of uh, rejuvenate the hearts of those that maybe they have not been so kind towards. But we want to really listen closely to this message tonight in Bible study. We, the saints of God, we have really got to learn how to guard our hearts because there's a lot of misconception about this thing called love, and there's a lot of things that's being said and a lot of messages that are being given. That's not real. And, and too many are walking in the spirit of bitterness. They're walking under the cloud of hatred and in the spirit of jealousy, and stir up a lot of strife. And they're holding these things in their heart. And, and, and during this week, they're, they're walking in these clouds of all these spirits. And, and there is really no real love in them. And they're waiting on Friday to get here on Valentine's Day. And, and many of us, we are not going to guard our heart, and and we are going to be misconceiving, and, and you know, and, and we are not going to be, uh, we're going to be caught off guard, and and because of all of the beautiful cards and all of the flowers that's going to be sent to us, and and all of the chocolate candy that we are going to be given, and all of the beautiful red roses and any other gifts of such that we are going to be given, you you know, is this going to take the focus off of what really needs to be dealt with? Because no longer in the body of Christ should it be tolerated that all of these gifts should override when we are walking in all of these different spirits that's not a God. These spirits have got to be dealt with. We can't just keep giving gifts and not dealing with the forgiving one another because the Bible says that, first of all, we should never let the sun go down on our realm. I'm not talking about the S-O-N. I'm talking about the S-U-N. Too many things are happening, you know, in relationships. Too many things are happening in marriages, you know, and, and we think that gift giving, you know, should take the place of what we are really feeling concerning one another. But no, we got to clean out the trash. We, we got to check out the garbage first. We got to empty these trash cans and these garbage cans before we start handing out all these precious gifts to one another. Yes, the gifts are important as an expression of love. The one expresses our love towards one another even the more is when we first learn how to come together and reason with one another, you know, and clean out the trash can. You know, we, we, we got to clear up that bitterness that we steer on towards one another and, and, and that it becomes hatred because we won't deal with it. You know, and jealousy that we hold in our heart towards each other, you know, and then it starts stirring up all of the strife, you know, and then we become, you know, so quick, you know, so quick, how we just strike out at one another so quickly for a little or no reason. So thereby, our topic tonight says, we in the body of Christ, we call ourselves the sanctified born again, fire baptized, Holy Ghost filled, anointed people of God, we have got to learn how to take authority over our heart so we can come forth with some real love for one another. Because a box of chocolate ain't going to do it. A heart, I don't care how sweet it may read, is not going to do it. I don't care the most beautiful flowers. 
is not going to do it. Uh, um, um, 12 bells are ro- a dozen of roses is not going to do it. It can't take away the stain of the pain that we have caused when we have hurt one another with these heartful words that we have said to one another or these are devious acts that we have done towards one another. There's got to be some real love. Why? Because there's been some real pain. There's been some real hurt that have been caused by these things that we have done. And we're walking in too much bitterness against one another. So I just want to kind of preface our message tonight with that because Valentine's will be Friday. But you know that we got to deal with the real love all the time. But we know that Valentine's Day is a time that we say we want to show that extra love to one another. We want to do a little extra for each other. We some have already made up in their mind they're not going to do anything for one another anyway because they're walking around mad at each other. So they already decide they're not going to do anything. And sometimes we choose to hold on to the bitterness, the hatred, the jealousy, and the strife so that we will have a reason not to do anything. But on the other flip side of the coin, some will use the cards, the flowers, the chocolates, and the roses, and other gifts as a means of not dealing with what the real issues are, but that does not tickle with the same of those ungodly things that we are walking around with against each other. Let's go to the Word and see what the Word now says about how we need to learn how to take authority over our heart. First of all, the writer says here again in verse 13, the writer says a merry heart. And we are looking at the difference between a good heart and an evil heart. A merry heart make a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Oh my God, that says a lot right there. So a person that has a joyful heart, I mean, a person that's not holding on to bitterness and, and, and jealousy and strife and hatred that's not walk and there are other you know spirits that's not of God that we walk in but just the name of few but a person that walking in those type of spirits you know those evil spirits there's nothing good about holding on to business and may have had an argument or, or something may have happened and you didn't get an opportunity to sit down and discuss with each other and clear that matter up you know you know now some Somebody walk around with evil in their heart and devising evil, how I'm going to get that person because now I'm upset with them. No, 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 no. That is not a joyful heart. That's an evil heart. But a person that has a joyful heart is one of those who have taken the opportunity. Yes, things happen in relationships regardless of what type of relationship it is. But know that we got to learn how to guard our heart so our heart might remain pure before God. But in order to have that joyful heart, we got to take care of these matters. We got to take the trash out. We got to empty the garbage can. But a joyful heart makes us stay cheerful. It keeps us happy. You know, it keeps our, keeps our, we are able to smile at other people and our smiles are pure. Grant many people that smile, they don't have they're not smiling from a joyful heart. They're not smiling from a happy place. They put a smile on the outside to hide what's really on the inside. But God don't want that from his people. He wants to take authority over what's in our heart that's not like him. Empty the trash can, empty that trash out of our heart. Sweep our hearts out, clean them, 
every day of the thing that's holding us back from coming before God with a pure heart, from coming before each other, especially our mates, from coming before our friends, from coming before our family, from whoever it is, that we can't be pure in heart when we come before people. Why? Because eventually what's in the heart is going to raise its ugly face at us. Look at that. It says a joyful heart makes a face cheerful, but a sad heart produces a broken spirit. So if I have brokenness in me, all I can do is broke other people. You know, I break other people down. How can I bring somebody else up when all I'm doing is walking in bitterness and walking around jealous and I'm walking in a strifeful spirit, you know, and, and I'm walking around hating on, on myself. And, you know, what, what, what do I have to give out of me that is good when I walk around with all of that that is not good that is in me? What I have learned, hurt people hurt other people. Broken spirits break other people's spirit down. You know, so a happy heart, it makes the face of other people cheerful. But the heartache of someone crushes down the spirit of others. You know, so take authority over whatever is not like God in your heart tonight. If you just got upset with somebody, get that thing right. The Bible says, don't let his son go down on your right knee. Don't you lay down. Put your head on your pillow. Don't you dare go to sleep and know that you are angry, know that you are upset. Knowing that you are bitter with somebody, knowing that you are jealous against your sisters or your brother. The Lord might be elevating somebody. Lord have mercy. Don't get jealous of somebody else's elevation in the Lord. We don't know elevation. Yours is coming, but God surely will not elevate you when you stand against in jealousy against what God is doing in some God, it helps this life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Don't you know that when you rejoice at what the Lord is doing for somebody else, don't you know that that is what causes God to appreciate you, and that is what causes God to bring you up? Have mercy, God. How dare we come against what the Lord is doing for another? Rejoice with others, and your time of rejoicing will surely come. But when you got hatred in your heart, you can only have heartache. And when you walk around with a heart that aches, the only thing that you will find yourself doing is crushing the spirit of others that you come in contact with for no reason at all. You you, you just like a time bomb waiting to explode all over the place on somebody because somebody's going to get what you're walking around with on the inside. At somebody else's extent, somebody is going to get what explodes from you. When you look at verse 14, and it says, the heart of him that has understanding Seek knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on a foolish nest. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. What what is they saying, Dr. B? It means that a person who understands that they don't know what they need to know. It's not even about knowing everything, right? Because Nobody, and I mean nobody, I don't care whether you have 50 lame titles. Yeah, I know that didn't sound right, but I'm going to say it again. I don't care if you have 50 lame titles behind your name, or if you don't have not one title behind your name. It's not about how much you know. If you know that you don't have knowledge and understanding 
about the things that you need to know so that you can grow in Christ. And if you know that you've got something that you carry in your heart, and if that thing causes you to burn and causes you to always strike out at people and that you don't know how to get to your trash can, you don't know how to get that garbage out of your heart because you have been hurt by other people. Let me tell you something. Don't allow your growth to be stunted because of what others have said or done. At the same time, the God become a point in our lives that we got to stop blaming everybody else for why we can't grow. Why? Because they cannot take authority over our heart. We got to learn how to take authority over our own heart. Thereby, when we seek knowledge, that means we have a discerning of mind to recognize that we are missing something. We got to discern for ourselves. That's why we got to seek knowledge and understanding for ourselves because people are not responsible for ensuring that we understand God the way that we should know Him. Nobody is responsible for our relationship with God but us. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's why we as individuals, we are responsible ourselves for taking authority over our heart. Why? Because the bitterness is in us. The hatred is in us. The jealousy is in us. That spirit is in us. That strife. These spirits reside in us. So we have to have a discerning mind to seek knowledge. Hallelujah, Jesus. And look at what the Bible says. The heart of him that has understanding, the one that understands that they lack in something, the one that understands, you know what, I ain't all that. Yeah, I might be knowing a little bit, but I don't know all that. And I don't have a problem seeking out, going to, that I may get whatever else I need to get to where I need to go and to know that which I need to know. But many of us are so proud, hallelujah Jesus, that we won't even seek out the knowledge and understanding that we need to know that we'll be able to grow thereby. But the Bible says the heart of him that have understanding, they'll seek knowledge. You understand that you are falling short, that you are coming up short on your relationship with God. You will seek more knowledge. You will seek knowledge. Hallelujah. That you will know what you need to know to grow thereby. But look at what the second part says. It said, but the mouth of the fools feed on foolishness. They said, but the mouth of a fool, they feed on the garbage of the world. Hallelujah. They will not pick up that Bible. Hallelujah. They will not seek out good counsel. Hallelujah. They will rather go to somebody who will agree with them in their foolish way. They will go to somebody and tell them, oh, yeah, they hurt you. Yeah, they had no right to say that to you. Yeah, you got a right to be bitter. You got a right to hate them. So what if you jail? Stand up, strike. If they haven't done that, if they have not said that, then you would have done, no, 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 no. The foolish will seek out those that will agree with them rather than seek out wise counsel that will help them work through the bitterness, work through the hatred, work through the jealousy, work through the strife to teach them how to empty the trash out of their garbage can so they can take authority over their heart so they can clean it out and begin to have a pure heart in Christ because God does not want us to hold 
hold these things, these spirits in us. Because when we walk in these spirits, there is no way our functionality in him can be what he will tolerate and he certainly will not accept the spirit coming from his children. Let us look at some things of those who they sought wisdom and they sought knowledge from others. King Solomon, hallelujah, Jesus, were considered to be the wisest man. Even King Solomon, when he was made king, hallelujah, he prayed unto the Lord. Even he sought God, and the only thing he asked for was wisdom, hallelujah, and understanding, hallelujah, on how to lead the people. When we look at Exodus, I'm sorry, when we look at Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 8, it says, He that did it wisdom loveth his own soul. He that, he that did it wisdom. Love his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. Hallelujah, Jesus. So when you when you get wisdom, that means you love your own soul. Why? Because you don't want to die in foolishness because you didn't know how to maintain your relationship in Christ because you didn't know how to clean out your trash out of your garbage can. Yeah, people may do things to you, but that's no reason to hate anybody. You may not like everything that people say, but that's no reason to walk around bitter, not speaking, not, you know, not even want to be around other people. Let me tell you something. That's not the way of a Christian. Christians are supposed to build up. Christians are supposed to lead. Christians are supposed to be the bearers of the light. The Bible says you are are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. And when the salt has lost its savor, where with us shall it be salted? How in the world can you be a light to anybody when you always go and hide yourself in the dark? Help me, Holy Ghost. My God, my God. So even King Solomon, as wise as he was, he sought wisdom. And the only thing he asked God was, give me a heart of wisdom so I'll know how to lead your people. Because this brings about the greatest good. Even the Queen of Sheba, she went to Solomon to seek wisdom from him because she knew that he was a wise man. And this was the queen of a nation, the queen of Sheba. Hallelujah. When you look at Matthew chapter 12 and verse 32, it says, the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment men with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. My God, Jesus was saying the queen of Sheba, she came all the way from the uttermost parts of the earth just to seek some wisdom and understanding at the feet of King Solomon to just to glean on the wisdom that he had. So she was wise enough to know that she had plenty of wisdom of herself, but at the same time there was somebody who had more wisdom than she had, and she sought it out. But Jesus said, even Solomon, in all his wisdom, he said that a greater than Solomon is here. He was talking about himself. So even as wise Jesus said there's still greater wisdom than that. Some of us, we so wise in our own self, not only will we not seek after the wisdom in the people of authority that God has placed in our lives, we won't even seek God out for wisdom. What did it say here? But though the mouth of a fool will rather feed on the foolishness in their own thinking and what their own own mind, they will rest in their own knowledge. They won't even seek out the Lord for a better understanding that they may take authority over 
their own foolishness of their heart. We're going to give you one last example, and then we're going to move on to verse 15. When we look at the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 8, 27 and 28, and the Bible says, and he, Philip, arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority on the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and setting in his chariot, where Isaiah or Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Now here it was a unit. This man, he knew that there was something missing in his life, but yet here he was over all, all of the treasure of the queen of Ethiopia. But yet he still knew that there was something missing in his life. So yet he was reading the word of God, the book of Isaiah. He, he was reading the word of God, seeking out, trying to find out what is wrong. What am I missing? I got this power. I'm over all of the treasure of the queen. She had trusted me because I had some wisdom. She trusted me over all of her treasure, over everybody else. But yet, he knew there was still something missing. And if we read the rest of the story, we recognize this man was trying to seek out how could he be saved. He knew that he was missing something. He had power, but he knew he did not have a savior. Hallelujah. And in the end, this man was asking, he said, where is the stop me for being baptized, Philip? He said, well, this man in this was, was I just talking about himself with all this good story, all this good scripture he was reading. He wanted to know, was I just talking about himself or was he saying all these good things about a mother? And so Phil had to help him understand, no, Isaiah was talking about a man named Jesus. And when he found out about this man named Jesus, he wanted, he said, that word's the word, I want to be baptized, and I want to know this man Jesus, because this man more wisdom than me. I want to become a follower of him. Hallelujah, Jesus. You see, so when you really seek the help that you need wholeheartedly, God will send the right people in your path to guide you into all truth. But do we really, do we really want to kick a thigh over our heart? Or do we we want to remain in our foolish ways. Hallelujah. So we can say anything to anybody. We can treat people any kind of way. And we can act any kind of way with anybody. And remain in those spirits of bitterness and spirits of hatred and the spirits of jealousy and strife. And we can go on and, and, and in the body of Christ and say that we are a child of God. Hallelujah, Jesus, but we don't know how to empty the trash out and throw the garbage cans out. Not so. Hallelujah, Jesus. We got to change our way of living. We got to transform our lives. Hallelujah. And become more like Jesus Christ. Just like this unit. We knew he had power. Just like us. God has given us the power and started to do many things. But do we have the mind of Christ? Do we have a heart like him? Do we love like him, or do we think that a box of chocolate, hallelujah, and, and a couple of cards and flowers and roses is enough? No, it's not enough. We got to be born again. We got to be saved. We got to clean out our heart and take authority over our heart. Verse 15, all the days of the afflicted are evil. Hallelujah, Jesus. But he that is of a matter of heart have a continual feast. Tell me where we go. And then when we look at the Christians and the Bible, according to Dr. Evans, he, he put it this way. All the days of the oppressed, they're miserable. Don't you know, have you ever heard the old cliche, misery love company? Yes, it does. Miserable people love to see other people miserable. 
That's why oh, the miserable people say the thing that they see. They don't want to see nobody else happy. They don't want to see nobody else laughing. They don't want to see things going right to nobody because they're miserable and they don't want to be miserable by themselves. He said, all the days of the oppressed are miserable, but a cheerful heart has a continual peace. You know, so when people mistreat you and doing you wrong, and you know that you haven't done anything to them, you know you haven't said anything wrong to them, but yet they're going around painting your name on every stop sign and everybody come in contact you. They, they're giving people misinformation concerning you, and, and they got people looking at you out the corner of their eye for no reason, and you wonder why they're looking at me like that. Don't worry about it. When you know you haven't done anything wrong, don't you know that you have taken charge over your heart? It's just somebody who has not yet learned how to take authority over their heart. And, and they're walking around with all these different evil spirits in them that they oppress and they are miserable. And they're trying to find somebody else to be miserable with them. Don't get in there under the misery wagon. Don't get in that wagon of misery with them. You stay on the path of the Lord so that you will continue to have a cheerful heart and a cheerful peace. Note this. The afflicted are always sad, but the merry are happy at heart. Life is as joyful and satisfying as the days of a festival. It depends on how we choose to confront and deal with each obstacle that comes our way. So life is pretty what, what, what we make of it. And it ain't nobody responsible to make us happy but ourselves. It's up to us. We want to blame other people for us not being happy. No, 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 no. no. We are responsible as individuals to make ourselves happy. But most of all, I want to be joyful. Happiness is temporal, but joyfulness is eternal. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, a wise person hungers for knowledge and truth, while the foolish man feeds on trash. I'm going to say that again. A wise person hungers for knowledge Knowledge and truth while the foolish man feeds on trash. In our daily fight to survive, we can seek the wisdom of truth or we can seek the destruction of trash. Too many Christians don't stay eyes after worldly pleasures that stunt our growth by seeking the wisdom and knowledge of man-made doctrine. However, if we are expecting to thrive and mature into adult Christians, then we must, and I mean we must, be nourished and sustained by the word of God and and listen at this. Please listen. A sandwich meal is not enough to provide the daily nutrition necessary to maintain our strength for the journey. Therefore, we must feast on full course meal of the Holy Ghost, filled with fire baptized meal of the Word, prayer, fasting. Bible study, fellowship, and daily meditation at least three times a day, along with the anointed oil and drinking of the healing waters, so that we might be provided for proper nutrition for spiritual survival, a strong mental diet, and a healthy heart and healthy soul. When the look at Psalm 51 and 10. David played after all that messing up David did when he took Uriah's wife and had Uriah 
kill. Hallelujah, Jesus. Did he realize that he done messed up? Broken fellowship with God and not his heart. Hallelujah, Jesus. He was in a contract place and he had a broken spirit because of what he had done. David prayed that prayer. He said, create me a clean heart of oh God and renew a right spirit within me. So of us need a right spirit tonight and a clean heart. Maybe we need to pray that prayer. Like David prayed that Psalm 51 and 10. Then when we look at Jeremiah 17 and 9, the word says, this is why we need to not take authority over our heart. But the word says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well, there is only one who can really know the heart of man. Only God knows the heart of man. He searches it and he tries it for the purpose of distributing rewards according to the ways and doings of each individual. See, when we go before God in prayer, and when we ask God to do a thing for us, God searches our heart, hallelujah, to determine the motive, hallelujah, Jesus, for which we have come before him and asking him for the things that we ask. So it is determined by the motive that God sees in our heart when we come before him asking him to do a thing before he will distribute unto us the results of our request. So we have to be careful, saints, and take authority over our heart. And we must first have the wisdom to go to God and know how to ask God for a thing. And we got to go pure in heart. We got to repent of that bitter spirit. We got to repent of that spirit of hate. We got to repent of that spirit of jealousy and repent of, of that spirit of trust and any other spirit that is not a Christ that we are walking in. We got to take authority over those spirits. Hallelujah, Jesus. And ask God to help us overcome those spirits so that we can walk in true love tonight for one another. Yet better times ain't coming. Hallelujah on Friday. But if you don't get trash out your trash cans and in the garbage can, you can stay in the cars. Don't buy no flowers. Don't take no shopping. Save your money on your dozen or red roses. Go and sit down and reason with your meat. Hallelujah, Jesus. Make your matters right first. Hallelujah. Because your shopping and your cars and your flowers and your roses don't matter until you make things right with one another, regardless of what your level of relationship are. You got to get that thing together and learn how to take charge over your heart. So in my summary, I want to read um, two uh, excerpts from my book, Hallelujah, uh, Inspirational Encouragement and Personal Journey. This, this book uh, it is very helpful. Uh, it's a collection of anecdote scriptures that is very insightful for those who are already known um, in their personal relationship with God, as well as you are seeking his true love and forgiveness. And you are also trying to develop a personal relationship with him. Um, this book also provides an avenue um, that you'll be able to journal your growth process in your quest of knowledge and your understanding of how to develop and increase your faith in God who gave up all his riches, came in the lost, dying world, shed his blood for the redemption of mankind. Hallelujah. And it teaches you how to have unconditional love. The first one I want to read to you is about forgiveness. 
my God, my God. And then it's, that's when I'm angry, it's wisdom. The Bible says that we must forgive others in order that we can be forgiven. What why is it we feel that God should forgive us when we do wrong but others don't deserve to be forgiven? We need to remember that everybody deserves a second chance. If God is willing to look beyond our thoughts and see our needs, then if we are like Christ, we should be able to do the same. Yes, it hurts when people wrong us, but when we forgive them, it is not for them. It is for us so that we can move forward in our lives. When we hold ill feelings and sometimes hatred in our hearts for others and cannot forgive and let it go, we need to realize it is sin in the sight of God. Admit your thoughts to God today, and he will surely forgive you. Also, be willing to forgive that person who has wronged you. You remember God loves you. He only hates your sin. And the scripture reading that goes with that is first John one verses eight through ten. And I'm gonna read extra wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Therefore, we must respect and reverence him and his will for our lives. Wisdom helps one to recognize right from wrong and calls them into accountability of daily practices in strength, weakness, actions, and thoughts. God will use wisdom to reveal his plan for his children. Wisdom begins, hallelujah, when we come to know who he is on a personal level and accept his way for our guidance. Wisdom is not simply being intellectual, but having deep devotion towards the Savior. A wise person fears, trusts, and seeks the Lord and desires to do his will. Wisdom will help you make health the choices in your life. And there's two scripture readings for this, and I will read them for you. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 2 and 6. And the second scripture reading, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberal and upbraided not, and it shall be given him. That's found at James chapter 1 and, and verse 5. And I'm going to close this Bible study with the prayer for wisdom. Father, give me wisdom so that I can know how to walk as a Christian daily. Through wisdom, teach us accountability for our own actions. We need wisdom so we can come to know your divine plan for our lives. We will follow after wisdom and make better choices that will be pleasing in thy sight. Lord, we pray this prayer for your wisdom. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for this word tonight, and we pray that this word has touched the heart of somebody that you have learned just a little bit tonight. There's so much more about how to take authority over your heart and not walk in bitterness, hatred, jealousy, and strife. And there's so many other negative spirits that we can walk in. So when Friday comes, you will be free in heart to give your cards, your flowers, your chocolates, and your roses to one another, and your love will be pure from the heart. Hallelujah. You've been listening to Dr. B from Transforming Lives by the Radio, by Jerry Ross Live Worldwide, and Father Power 21.
and Christian media. Coming up next will be Paula Brian with a testimony followed by Shalanda Rams and Inspiration Treasure. We love you, but God loves you best, and we ask that you join so that you can hear some more good words. Come back next week, same time, same place, and you will be tuning in to the Tuesday Night Triple Podcast, and we love you, and but we want you to stay on the line so that you can hear the more words. This again, this is Dr. B. Transforming lives by the radio all the way from Sony, South Carolina. We love you. Take charge and take authority over your heart. Good night. Let us not be ashamed to ask the good Lord to walk with us. In every situation, whatever you may be going through, don't be ashamed to ask the good Lord to walk with you. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. I need Jesus to walk with me while I'm on this, this Coming from the Lord, and the Lord is not shade up on that rock.